amazing thing is that all churches and all sacred places, and meeting places, will have a very special spot that people are drawn to. And it's a subtle energy spot and you can discover it by dowsing. And the wonderful thing is that this uh, vortex of energy, which is created there by prayer or by meditation, responds to human consciousness. Because churchyards are wonderful places to dowse. You can do all sorts of things. You can find out the earth energy center of the, the churches. You can find out so many different things. Very famous people like Guy Underwood did masses of work on, on uh, recording underground streams and, and energy patterns all around churches and cathedrals and, and all sorts of ecclesiastical places. Of course, Guy Underwood made a very special dowsing tool of his own made a very, very thin wire and little, tiny loops and it piddled around in some way and he was very, very accurate with it. I find it very difficult to use. And normally dowsing is done by uh, either a pendulum or a rod and the pendulum looks something like, like that and you, uh, you get results with it uh, whistling around either one way or the other and the rod is something like that. Some of you might have decided to use rods or, or pendulums or anything else before. And each one of them it's, in itself is not important, but it's important that you relate to it, that it's part of you and it's an extension of you and it's a believable thing because you have to use it to develop a yes and no. And that, the whole basis of dowsing is about developing an accurate yes and no. There are more dowsing tools than there are dowsers. And the absolute basic tool is, is, is this one. This is the one that I talked before about. This is cut from a hedge and we have to tension it. The fellows have to be very careful because once you start to find the water, it goes like, like that. <laughs> the girls have an equal problem because very often when they start doing it, it goes up. And I've, and I've seen a great big lumps on their head. <laughs> very, very strong action. And of course it was... Um, it, it, uh, was okay right through the centuries because some of the authorities didn't like dowsing. They called it divining and they said it was the work of the devil. And to walk about with a thing like that was like walking with a Kalashnikov. So what they did was uh, cut this from the hedge near where they had to work because the big thing was to find water. And uh, if anybody came along who was in authority, they'd just break it up, put it under their arm, and they were collecting sticks for the fire. We do a little one for the kids because they can't uh, tench them. A tiny little hazel twig there. And they, they do exactly the same thing. And it's great. The kids are wonderful because they reckon this old grey bearded fella could do it. They could do it too. There's never any question. And there's a, a lovely old chap called Jack Benny who makes um, lots of these tools. He's 80 something now. How can I say that he's 80 something? I'm 80 something. <laughs> <laughs> he's an old man. <laughs> And that's a pair of horse whips with a little copper things on it. And, and that's just as effective. And you can even lose an old bit of curtain rod with a bit of, of tape around it. And you have to tension it in exactly the same way, but it has exactly the same effect. You pull it out and it's tensioned and it gives you your indication, the answer to your question. The, the important thing is, is, is the nature of the question. In order to phrase the question, you've got to decide very, very precisely what you're looking for. You actually have to teach yourself a sequence of questions which get you nearer and nearer and nearer the target every time. And each time you use your yes and no and you go by whatever answer you get from there to phrase another question that gets you nearer what you're looking for. You must develop a very positive yes and no. A yes and no you can absolutely trust. Now this is difficult because what you're trying to do is to get rid of the answers that you are expecting from your logical mind. You're accessing a source of the answer to the question which is not from logic. It's from another part of your mind or your brain or from the etheric or whatever you like to call it. And you, you have to learn to access that. And the only way you can access it is to practice. And you find you're actually dowsing properly when you get an answer to a question that is not the one you expected. Well, my name is Val Johnson and I douse for health. We find 
that the root cause of illness is often um, related to diet intolerances and allergies. When we're looking at diet, we're looking at whether people are um, have an intolerance to metals and environmental problems as well, and beverages, all across the board. When you douse, you can douse for anything. If the intention is there, you get help to find the answers. But keep it simple. Don't ask too many questions, just keep it very simple. Just ask one question at a time to allow you know the answer to come through. It's a very discreet model which is fiberglass which was used actually by a, a lovely American lady who was dousing in cathedrals and she used to tension this thing and she was she was quite plump with a fur coat nobody could see what she was doing but she doused it for energy in the, in the cathedrals in exactly the same way as you do with a big stick. This is the one I like. It's got a flattened handle on and I can tell the strength of the energy field on it because I can feel the, the thing turning. It's very difficult to do that with, with a round rod and this is why I use this, this flattened thing. And when I started and, 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 the, and the first piece of dowsing I did was to walk up the road up here and see whether there was any energy between St Michael's Mount and Trencrom. And I said, is there an energy line between Trencrom Hill and St Michael's Mount and I walked up the road and I just got that much and it changed my life completely and it's, it's, it's taken me around the world for the last 25 years. This one I made from 10 mil steel. There are some big forces, magnetic, earth magnetic forces around here and I just wanted to see how strong these forces were and I found that this had worked in exactly the same way. So I thought I'd crack it once and for all so I made some of these these rods are two and a half pounds weight and once you get them up there they're just as accurate as the other ones and they, they pull towards this, this magnetic force. So we're dealing with some, some extraordinary mysterious um, thing in dowsing that allows you to detect thing, forces that you can't normally detect. Now the other one it really intrigued me was by Alan Heiss, an American dowser, and he, he did a lot of his dowsing in cathedrals. And he used to uh, find the stuff like that. You wait till the priest pass and go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a car aerial. This is one by Rodney Smith, a local uh, dowser in Devon, and he calls it his wiggly thing and it's about tensioning again he uses it in exactly the same way but he tensions this thing out and when, it, when he's over his target it flips over I find it slightly difficult to use but, but uh, a lot of people swear by it and this is a bobber and if you prefer the bobber it's uh, this uh, I'll, I'll just use that this, this little energy center here I'll just use that as a, as a, as a demonstration because when you use a bobber, I find it quite difficult, but with practice you could keep it pretty steady. And when you get over the point of the earth energy thing there, it starts wobbling. You don't even need to cut your wire coat hanger and make it into L rod. You can use it exactly as it is if you like, and it will indicate exactly the same way that a proper dowsing rod does. And you can even use a child's plastic one although it's very difficult to justify going down Penzance High Street with one of these. Mm -hmm.